Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to the next lesson in our modern C++ series. In today's lesson, we're going to be looking at another numeric algorithm known as adjacent difference in the standard template library. So let's go ahead and have a look here on CPP reference. And we're going to go down to numeric algorithms and I'll go ahead and scroll down here to the numeric operations. And we're going to find this interesting algorithm known as adjacent difference. So if we look at what it says it's going to do here, it's going to compute the difference between adjacent elements in a range. Okay, so let's try to illustrate this just a little bit before we jump into the algorithm uh, and just understand exactly what that means. So first and foremost, let's go ahead and give ourselves some container here. I'm just going to draw an array or it could be a vector or a string or whatever. And we're going to compute the difference between adjacent elements in that range here. OK, so again, I'll put the definition here and keep it highlighted. Uh, and what does that exactly mean? Well, if we use integers, that'll usually make things a little bit more clear here since we're computing some difference. So I'm going to do 7, 5, 1, 3, 9, 2, just some random values here. And basically what I want to compare is these adjacent elements here. So 7 and 5, 5 and 1, 1 and 3, 3 and 9, and 9 and 2, OK? and then. Ultimately, we sort of decide at the ends what we're going to do with seven and two, because there's nothing really to compare to. We could treat this as maybe uh, zero, if you will. Uh, but the basic idea is it gives us some sort of, well, difference here. Now, why might we need this? And where does this sort of fall into our building blocks? Well, for one, this is a really common problem where you want to find like the maximum difference between two numbers that are next to each other. So it's actually a very common like leak code problem that we could actually solve in uh, using two of the algorithms that we've learned in the numeric algorithms library. We could find the adjacent difference and then find the minimum or maximum element in that range. So problem solved for a lot of you leak coders out there. But again, more pragmatically, why might you use that information? Well, if I have the adjacent difference between these two values, seven and five, for instance, two, and let's go ahead and compute this first so we can see, you know, what do these numbers mean here? Uh, so again, I'm going to, for the purpose of this, um, computing the adjacent difference, I'm going to just go ahead and treat seven because, you know, there's nothing really adjacent to it as seven. And we're going to find out that's sort of what the standard library does here. A difference between seven and uh, five here. So go ahead and draw a little arrow here is two. Difference between five and uh, one here is again going to be uh, four. Difference between one and three is negative two. Difference between three and nine, negative six. Difference between nine and two is seven. And then the difference between um, two um, is really nothing. We'll just go ahead and, uh, you know, we, we computed the final difference over here, okay? So I'll just try to highlight these so you can see where the corresponding values are, okay? So, I mean, at the ends here, we'll kind of have to figure out, do we discard those values? Do we just keep the first value? Again, it's sort of up to you. So maybe we'll compute uh, an example here and just go ahead and recreate this with adjacent difference. Let's go ahead and do that. And then we'll take a little bit of a closer look at it and try to understand maybe a use case where we might uh, actually want this functionality. Maybe we can think of some uh, sort of real world problem where we could use this uh, and so on here. So anyways, let's go ahead and just keep this example here. Let's look at adjacent difference. Uh, and we are going to notice that there are quite a few uh, different overloads here. For the most part, we can ignore the ones that say until uh, the first versions and just keep the ones that are at C++ uh, 20 since that's what we're going to use. And usually that's giving us a const expert version here. Okay, so let's just dissect this first one here. Take a look at it. So adjacent difference again is the algorithm. It's going to take our range here to input iterators here, the first and the last, and then where we're going to be outputting our result. Okay, so we could write it back into the same container if we wanted, or we'll probably just create an output or result uh, as well here. And that's got a return value for the output iterator. So let's read a little bit here just to understand what's going on. Make this a little bit bigger. Uh, so again, we need a range here. Uh, it's not empty. Uh, and then we'll compute the differences between the uh, second and the first of each adjacent pair uh, of its elements and write the difference to the range uh, beginning with, well, wherever we're writing out to, d first here. Uh, plus one here. Uh, an unmodified copy of the first iterator is written to first. And then overloads one and two use operator minus by default to calculate the difference. Okay, so we fit, we have our own custom type here, just something else that handles a forward iterator. It's going to call the operator minus by default. Now there is a way to otherwise provide some other binary operation. I don't know, maybe you want to multiply these uh, values or do some other 
thing uh, with adjacent elements, that would be fine here. You can provide just a binary operation here. Okay, so that's what it's saying with, for the other overloads here. Uh, you can use the given binary function um, uh, shown here. So just some function that takes in two arguments for whatever type you're working with. Um, and it basically applies, um, uh, looks like it makes it a move operation. Okay. Um, okay. So let's again, try to code up this example, what we saw here, uh, and make use of this uh, and actually writing this or giving an implementation of this is probably a good programming interview question. I've actually had that before, uh, implement adjacent difference without, uh, using adjacent difference. <laughs> so we have a few different implementations here, uh, and we could do this in sort of a generic form with iterators, but you could try this with just an array of numbers. Um, let's see if they give us anything. Uh, yeah, these are all using iterators here, uh, but basically it's sort of creating a little sliding window of, uh, you know, two elements at a time, taking the difference and moving that value, uh, to a new location or making a copy of it. Okay. So, uh, let's go ahead and see how this is uh, used here. Yeah. We looks like in the example here, we're just writing to the same result. Let's do it both ways just to see how this works. And we'll keep our example here. Uh, let's go ahead and give ourselves a, uh, we'll give ourselves a vector here, uh, cause we might want to modify things and we've got a vector here. V I'm going to use class template argument, uh, deduction so that I don't have to type in the type here, right? C plus plus will be smart enough to figure that out. Uh, or at least on a C plus plus 20 compiler. So I have seven, five, one, three, nine, and two. And then let's go ahead and compute the adjacent uh, difference here. Standard adjacent difference. And let's make this just a little bit larger here. There we go. Uh, from the beginning uh, to the end. And let's see, we need an output here. So I'm going to go ahead and in this first example, I'm just going to go ahead and create a result here. Uh, and let's actually put the type in here just so it's explicit here. Uh, and let me make the mistake that I always make here where I'm just going to put uh, result uh, dot begin, right? And then we're going to try to compile this. Okay, so I know this is a mistake. I always make it on every video. I'm going to make it again here um, at least once uh, just so you can see that um, first and foremost, we don't have this algorithm. Okay, so two mistakes at least are coming up. Uh, so numeric. Spell that correctly. There we go. Uh, compile it. Uh, and interestingly, oh, I guess if I do run it, no, segmentation fault here. Okay, so um, we, again, do have to be careful here. Let's go ahead and open this up here. Uh, and we need space allocated for this, right? We need an output iterator. So we could do this two different ways here. Let me do it the uh, way that I always forget to do, which is to use the std uh, back inserter. And then I want to put these into result. Let's see if that does the trick here. Compiles. And now if I run it, it'll run here. Okay. Now let's actually see what our result is. We'll just go ahead and print it out uh, with a regular old for loop here. And I'm just going to use a regular element. These are integers, so I don't need to really pass them by reference. Uh, and we're going to look through our result here. And I'm going to want to put these on the same line here, uh, maybe space separated here or with a comma. Uh, and then at the very end, let's just do a new line and see out here. Okay. So let's go ahead and compile this. If it compiles, we'll go ahead and run it and it compiles and runs. Let's see. Does it match our, uh, adjacent difference or did I calculate that wrong here? Seven. Uh, oh, let's see. So five minus seven. Okay. So negative two, one minus five. I guess I got the order wrong here. Three minus one is two, uh, nine minus three is six. And then uh let's see yeah looks like the order was uh flipped around from what i had here so always good to check here so again seven we just keep five minus uh seven negative two one minus five negative four three minus one is two nine minus uh three is six two minus nine negative seven okay so i did get the ends right there uh perfect here okay so important to check uh as always there i'm gonna go ahead and leave that in but we can see how we use this with the uh, back inserter. Um, let's say that I didn't want to use the result here. Uh, so again, I'm going to just comment out this example here. And again, we could redo this where I just write it into uh, V itself here. Okay. Uh, let's see. What if I did just like V begin or something? Uh, and let's just go ahead and do V. Let's see. Is that going to work here? Compile and run it. Do we get the same result? 
Uh, seven, negative two, negative four, two, six, negative seven. We do. Okay. So that's still okay here. Uh, if we look at our uh, example provided, uh, they can just write it out to the beginning. Or that's rather where we're going to start overriding the range here. Okay. So either way it works. Now let's think about pragmatically why we might want to use this. Because this could be kind of a strange algorithm to think about um, in terms of, you know, what's the building block here? Um, where is this actually useful? Uh, to compute something like this. Um, well, there's a couple of different tasks you could probably use this for. One, again, you could combine this uh, and let's actually use our result here. Okay, so I will uh, unwind this here and we'll use our result here. Uh, yep, keep the result. And let's run this on something that we learned uh, previously. So let's use standard, uh, let's see here. Uh, min element and we're going to want to look through our result beginning and the result dot end um, and I forget if this returns uh, the iterator here I believe uh, because min element is going to give us an iterator to the uh, minimum let's see here minimum and then we could write out the min here standard minimum is and then since we're going to get an iterator back here from min element, uh, we want to dereference this. Okay, so let's go ahead and take that uh, value here. And that's from our result set. Uh, so we can say the minimum uh, difference is, okay, the minimum adjacent difference, I should say, adjacent difference. Let's just label that a little bit better. Uh, was negative seven, right? That was the smallest value in these adjacent elements that we have. Okay, so why is that useful? Well, whether you want the minimum or the maximum value uh, from this uh, collection here of the adjacent differences, I mean, that tells you something about this relationships between these data uh, that are here. Okay, so maybe you're optimizing something. Uh, it could be how you're sorting or distributing, for instance, uh, passengers on an airplane, right? Because you have to distribute uh, the passengers and their bags, um, you know, in some sort of interesting way, or the weight of the bags, for instance, to make sure that there's not like a huge uh, load in one area. So again, you might use adjacent difference for that. Uh, you might be using that for otherwise organizing things. Let's say that these are books on a bookshelf here, and I've got one that's seven units high, five units high, one unit high, uh, three unit high or something like that. And you want to aesthetically make sure that they sort of line up or aren't, you know, too high of differences, or you're trying to figure out, you know, if you have your bookshelf, uh, how many books can you cram in the one shelf that happens to be bigger than the other, right? So that's sort of like a realistic problem for, for optimizing. Uh, you might be using this difference for some sort of filter calculation on image processing. I mean, there's a lot of different interesting use cases you could probably think of, but I wanted to give an actual pragmatic example of this and compose it or use uh, with something that we've learned before, min element here, okay? So anyways, I hope that gives you the idea of adjacent difference, some different ways that you can either push out the resort result or uh, actually just write the result uh, into the same collection if you want. Let's go ahead and just leave that here as the backup where you just do uh, B begin so you don't have to do any extra allocations. Um, and again, it is important to make sure you get that uh, ordering correct, <laughs> unlike what I did, uh, which are taking the difference between the second element and the first element exactly as the documentation says. Alrighty, folks. So with that said, hopefully you learned a little bit about adjacent difference, another numeric algorithm here. Uh, and as always, you can go ahead and track your progress on my website, courses.mshot.io. You can follow along on tracking your progress on these free lessons on YouTube. I just released a new course as well. If you'd like a crash course into C++, so check that out or recommend it to folks if you think it'd be useful for them. And as always, folks, thanks for your help. Thanks for your support and kind words in the comment section. And otherwise, I'll look forward to seeing you in the next lesson, which will continue looking at some other cool algorithms, right? I'll see you there.